Okay, beautiful people. Child's pose is where we'll start today. So you're touching your big toes together here, sitting on your heels. You can walk your hands out away from your hips and take your time. Okay, sometimes it takes a breath or two to allow your spine to kind of drape over your legs. And take some time just to breathe here, friends. Okay, you find real spaciousness in the back, your low back, especially getting spread open toward the sky. Feel spacious in the back of your neck here. Okay, your head is resting. So the muscles in the back of your neck have nothing to do but just soften and relax. And allow that sense of softness and relaxation to really, really diffuse throughout your whole spinal column and your back. Okay, breathing deeply into all of that. Just enjoy being still. Each breath longer and more complete. Notice all parts, front and back of your rib cage, equal expanding, equal contracting inward. Keep that big breath moving, that big rib cage movement, and start to walk your hands out away from you. Okay, remember to plug your shoulders into your shoulder sockets here to keep them away from your ears and to keep your neck long, okay? As always, we want that long neck to preserve. And then walk your long arms out to the right. We'll take a side stretch here. Once you plant your palms over there and may, maybe drop your forehead to move your left hip away from your hands and breathe. Breathe all into the left side. Maybe one more breath here. Maybe move the, le the left hip a little bit further away. Maybe press the floor, reach out further with your fingertips. All right, friends, bring your hands to the other side. Big side stretch on this side. Okay, hands on the left. We're starting to move that right hip over to the right. So think about all the tissue on the right side, the armpit, the rib cage, the low back, peeling open. Each breath softens and expands that space. Draw the shoulders down your back here. All right. Walk your hands back to center. Pull yourself up to hands and knees. Come on up, friends. Let's get the right knee out behind you. So bent knee, toe pointed up at the ceiling. And strong upper body here. So you're pushing the floor down and away. 
Okay, make sure your chest is turned on. I like to just pull my elbows inward a little bit and that'll turn that upper body into some nice stable base. Okay, and then belly button into the spine, of course. And we're gonna lift and lower this right knee without lowering the right, without lifting the right hip. So lift and lower the knee, try to keep the head down. So you'll notice that right glute turning on. Okay, right glute, getting maybe a little tired, but that's okay. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one, and then hold that last one. Push the floor a little more and breathe. Push the floor more, lift your belly button more, and lift that knee more. Nice, maybe one more big breath in here. And then let it go, big exhale. Draw that right knee to your nose. See if you could touch the knee to the nose. And then inhale, come back to that shape we just left, but keep going, pull your heart forward. Point that right toe at the back of your head. It won't touch unless you're a circus performer, but go for it anyway. And then back the way we came, exhale, roll that knee to your nose. Inhale, right toe to the back of your head, breathe. And let's take a few more like this. Okay, you're really moving that right hip through its full range of extension and flexion. Let's do one more, point the toe at the back of your head. Point the knee to your nose. And then let it go. Drop that right knee back to the floor. Tuck your toes behind you. And lift your hips up and back. You can walk your hands to your feet here. And just fold and shake it out. Hang your head, shake it out. Okay, this is a really good time to notice how the backs of your legs are feeling. Okay, tension in your hamstrings, just become aware. Tension in your calves, perhaps, you're just noticing. Maybe you noticed your low back or your upper back here as well. Now let's roll it up. Okay, with your inhale, press into your heels, stack yourself up really slowly. Think of pushing down, lifting your heart. Okay, reach up, maybe look up at your hands, a little tiny back bend. Exhale here, hinge your hips and come all the way back down. Shake it out. And then walk your hands forward, big breath in, just a momentary plank. Remember that a plank, you can have your knees down on the ground if you need to, okay? And then lower yourself slowly down. Press the floor away. Two more times, just like that. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, push the floor away. One more yoga push up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Nice, exhale here, drop your knees. We're gonna do the other side. Okay, yoga push-ups, feels good. Let's get the left knee out behind. Okay, as before on the right side, tuck that left hip under. Keep it nice and level. Strong belly, strong upper body. So little pulses of that left knee. Just lift and lower, lift and lower. Okay, so you feel that glute working, let it work. Okay, a little challenge. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one. Now hold it there and breathe, okay? Hold, maybe lift the knee a little more, lift your belly a little more. You can even bend the knee more and point the toe at the back of your head. All right, one more big breath here. And then exhale, pull that left knee into your nose, push the floor away, round your spine. And then as you inhale, extend your spine, pull your heart forward, pull that left toe towards the back of your head. 
Let's do that again. Exhale, pull it in, knee to nose. Inhale, open up, toe to head. Keep moving, friends. Find a pace that suits you. Okay, one more. Bring that toe toward the back of your head. Bring that knee to your nose. And then let it go. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, hands walk back to feet again, and just shake it out again. Maybe fingertips out in front of you and you rock your weight from heel to toe. Heel, toe, heel, toe. <laughs> All right, find solid feet. We're going to roll it up. Inhale, press into your heels, roll it up. Lift your heart, maybe look up. And exhale, hinge it all the way down. Palms to the floor. Inhale, walk your hands forward and find your plank. We're going to do three more yoga push-ups so you can put your knees down, okay? And exhale, lower yourself partially down. Maybe it's to touch the nose on the floor. Who knows? You can drop your knees too. Inhale, press it back up. Pull those elbows in. Two more. Exhale, slowly down. Inhale, slowly up. One more, yogis. Push down. Push up. Nice, with this exhale, press your hips back to a downward facing dog and take just a moment here. I know your arms are worked, but stretch, open your armpits toward the ground, pedal out your legs, and then walk to your hands to the top of your space, top of your mat, and just fold it here. So go ahead and touch your big toes together. Leave a little space between your heels and drop your hips here. Bend your knees. Inhale here, sweep your hands up into a chair pose and hold and breathe. Here in your chair, okay? Pull those knees inward and lift your belly button up and in so you can really point your tailbone down. Breathe in chair pose, Utkatasana. See if you can lift your uh, toes, maybe, and drop your tailbone a little bit. Okay, see if you could keep your left leg just where it is, okay, without extending that left knee at all. And take a big breath in, lift your right foot up off the floor. Exhale here, step the right foot back to a lunge. Inhale, sweep your chest up and open, crescent lunge. Nice, and exhale, step it back to that squat. Let's do the other side. Inhale, lift just the left foot. Don't change the right leg. Exhale, left foot steps back to lunge. Inhale, heart up and open. Exhale, step it back to squat. Let's do it again two more times on each side. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale, right foot back, lunge. Inhale, heart up, crescent lunge. Exhale, step it back to the squat. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, left foot back. Inhale, heart up, crescent lunge. Exhale, back to the squat. Now, if you need to drop the back knee, you can always do that, okay? Last round. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale, right foot back. Inhale, heart up, crescent lunge. Exhale, back to the chair squat. Last one, inhale, left foot up. Exhale, left foot back. Inhale, heart up, crescent lunge, big heart opener. And exhale, back to the squat. Drop a little lower. And with your inhale, reach up, stand up. Exhale here, hinging at your hips, fold it all the way down. On your inhale, come halfway up, roll that spine to look forward. 
And with your exhale, fold deeply, hug your legs. Palms are down here. Inhale, step it back to your plank. And exhale, slowly lower it all the way down, elbows in. Keep going through the little vinyasa here. Inhale for your cobra, peel that heart open. And exhale, downward facing dog. Come on up to down dog here, shake it out, walk it out for a moment. Breathe. Okay, built a lot of heat in the legs with that lunge and squat the combination. Okay, a lot of nice heat in the arms, holding up your heavy arms. Okay, a lot of good work for your shoulders. Let's take a few more breaths here, really pushing the floor, taking a break on your knees if you need to. Okay, friends, let's keep going. From here, let's get that right leg up in the sky. Okay, big breath in here. And as you exhale, bend that right knee and shoot the toe to the left. Go ahead and look under your left arm to find your right foot and pause here in your scorpion pose. Now, if you need to drop your left knee, you're just gonna do pretty much the same thing, okay? You're still gonna be practicing that looking under the armpit movement. So drop a knee or no, whichever one works best. But if you're looking over at that right foot, then remember, to pull back on your left hip so you feel really open in the back of the left leg. So pull back on the left hip and drop that right armpit like you wanted to put it on the floor. Now you're gonna need to bend your elbows slightly here so don't lock them out. Scorpion pose. Now I'm gonna give you kind of a funky option here because the legs are warm and the shoulders are warm. If you like, you can drop that right toe over to the floor on the left, all the way down. And you'll straighten your left leg like you're in a side plank. And then you just get that, get that right arm up and you can play around with making a funky back bend out of it, okay? A flip dog or a wild thing. Big breath, you can even cactus the right arm and make your chest super huge. And as you're ready, make your way out of that. We're gonna flip back to that scorpion pose, okay, if you came out. And then inhale here, stick that right leg up in the sky. Exhale here, send that right foot forward and drop it between your hands. Go ahead and drop your back knee. Come up on your fingertips and take a little time just to wiggle the back knee into place. Okay, maybe you need to take the left knee in a different spot but allow your hips to sink nice and low, okay? But remember that as you allow them to sink low, you need to support them a little bit with a little gentle push against the floor with your legs. So keep that gentle resistance. Okay, and then use this right knee to press yourself up to your low lunge. So breathing here, just reach up and just be in your low lunge. Enjoy it, here you are, Anjane Asana. So remember, you're gently pushing the floor all the time. Keep that. You're gently pulling your knees in toward each other all the time, so keep that too. And if everything's going great, you have a really strong belly button moving into your spine and you have the heart lifting, so you feel open in the front. I'm gonna give you some options to go deeper. If you need to take a break, you're just gonna bring your fingers down. If everything's feeling great and you've really been craving a great low back and hip release lately, take your left hand to your left hip. Sorry, we're gonna do the opposite way. Take your right hand to your right hip. Okay, I had the wrong side. So right hand on your right hip, your left arm is reaching up here because we want the left side to be really long. So you feel the line from your left arm down to your left hip. And then extend that line over your head to the right. Breathe here. Remember your stability, your floor. Keep pushing the floor down. Keep pulling the knees in toward each other. Okay, if everything's going great and the floor is close, you can drop your fingers on the right. Right hand fingers touch the floor. 
If it's really far away, don't worry about it, okay? But if it's there, you can touch down and reach the left hand even more to the right. And maybe if it feels right, begin to lift your heart up and open to the ceiling and reach back with the left hand. But you're kind of feeling it out all the time. Maybe one more big breath here in your low lunge. Okay, wherever you are, still a powerful posture for your hips and your legs and your low back. And then bring your hands down in front. You can come out of it. We're gonna have one hand on either side of the right foot here because that right foot's gonna walk over to the left. And we drop the right knee here. Find yourself in a pigeon pose. Okay, rock over on that right hip and adjust the foot placement, okay? Put the foot close to you if you need to kind of take it easy on the right hip. If the right hip is doing great today, you're going to take that right foot away from you. Okay. And then your hips don't need to touch the floor, but make sure they're level with each other. And then have your fingers out in front of you here. We're going to play around before we come down. So your spine is upright-ish, and you can have your fingers more forward if you need to be. But I want you to continue to gently resist the floor, just like when you were in your lunge just now. Okay, continue to push the floor down with your legs. And then looking forward, see if you could bend that left knee, point the toes at the back of your head. Inhale, extend it. Exhale, bend it. Point those toes at the back of your head. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend and hold right there. If you get a cramp, of course, you gotta, let it, you gotta let it go. But if you can take one more big breath here, do it. All right, let that go. Let that left leg just relax to the floor and walk your hands away from your hips. Finally coming all the way down. Okay, take your time here in your pigeon. Um, but it's important that to make the most of it, you continue to gently resist the floor. That's very important here. Okay, just a little activation of the two legs downward. We'll get into the right hip the way that we want it. You can add a little twist here if you like. You can slide your left arm underneath your right and ground that left shoulder. So you're looking out to the right. Then you can interlace your fingers and straighten that right arm. Wherever you are in your pigeon, close your eyes. Spend a little time just resisting the floor gently, noticing how you feel. Right hip, left hip. Take one more long, slow breath here. And then start to make your way out. There's no rush. Take your time coming back up on your hands, okay, under your shoulders, and then tuck the left toes, lift the left knee. Let's see if we could bring it up to a three-leg dog from here. With an inhale, right leg up in the sky, unfold yourself, and then exhale, let the right foot go. Bring it down next to the left, okay? Do the other side, just like that, but on the left, okay? Here we go, let's get the left foot up in the air. Let's bend the left knee, point the toes to the right, scorpion. Okay, super important to practice the, this idea of looking under the right armpit and seeing the left foot, okay? And moving that right hip back. Move that hip back. And then we want to allow that left armpit to drop really low to the floor. 
So we're just giving ourselves the longest spine we can, the more space in the back of the right leg. So you can stay here in scorpion, dropping a knee at any time, or you could flip dog, okay? You could flip your dog by dropping the left toes, tippy toes to the floor on the right. Make your right leg like a side plank leg, and you can reach the left arm up, and you could keep it like more of a side plank, okay? So you can kind of interpret it. Side plank, maybe you make it a side stretch, maybe you make it more of a back bend and lift that heart up and open, okay? I like a good back bend, so I'll always take it there, but you're always hoping to keep it more of a plank. Maybe one more big breath here, pushing that floor away wherever you are. And come down skillfully, come out slowly, meeting up in a scorpion. And then inhale and cure, send that left leg up in the sky. Exhale, send that left foot forward and drop it between your hands. Drop that back knee, prepare for a low lunge. So get yourself comfortable, okay? I usually have to scoot the right knee back a little bit and then you've got to move onto the, the part of the knee that feels comfortable. I like the top edge of the kneecap. Okay, friends, and then you'll start to activate those legs against the floor and press yourself up. Now you can stay right here. You can keep your hands on the thigh. Sometimes that's nice and you can come down. But start to really push that floor away and lift your heart here. A big stretch for the front and right side of your body here. So in general, you wanna give yourself about 30 seconds um, just to start to really enjoy any kind of muscle lengthening in any kind of uh, effective way. So when in doubt, if a stretch doesn't feel right at first, back out, take it really gently. And then after about 30 seconds, you might find it more soft and easy. So if all is going well, and you feel like it's a good idea to go a little deeper into the stretch. Then take your left hand to your left hip and lengthen that right arm up and over to the left, stretching open that right side a little more, but keep seeing the floor away. If all is going well here, you can take the left fingers to the floor on the left under your shoulder, and then maybe play around with that right side expanding and lifting the heart, who knows? You could take the back bend option, you could make it more of a twist. But wherever you are, keep pushing that floor. Okay, maybe one more big breath here in your low lunge, a variation with this nice hip flexor stretch. And then we're bringing it back around, hands down in front on either side of that left leg. Shimmy the left foot to the right and drop the left knee, pigeon. Come on in. Take your time. You can rock onto the left hip while you decide where you wanna put the foot, okay? Always adjust that foot. Remember the hips don't have to be level. I mean, sorry, the hips don't have to be down on the floor, but they do need to be level. So some people even practice with a pillow or a block under their hips. And you can do that too, if there's a lot of space and you just kind of feel stressed out about it. You can always put something there. Okay, but make sure the top of the right foot is on the floor, internally rotating in the hip. And then take your hands out away from you. And we're gonna bend that right knee, point it at the back of your head with the toe and then extend. Again, bend the knee, use your hamstrings, extend. One more, bend and hold. See if you could maybe inch your fingers back here, make it a little closer, who knows? One more breath here, really great stretch for your quadriceps, strengthen it for your hamstrings, and then let it go. Walk your hands 
out away from your hips and come on down to your reclining pigeon. Breathe here, pigeons. Remember to gently resist the floor, okay? Push down a little bit with the legs. Pull inward a little bit in the knees. Engage the right glute. You can add the twist here, sliding the right arm under the left, dropping the right shoulder. You can interlace your fingers and straighten your arms. Take a couple more breaths here. Close your eyes, let your heart rate Slow down. Let your breath get slow again if it got a little hot and fast during your practice. Cool down. And then take your time coming out. Start to press yourself at Back up on your hands, under your shoulders. Tuck your right toes behind you. Hover that right knee. And let's bring it up to a three-leg dog from here. Left leg up in the sky. And exhale, drop the left foot next to the right. Downward facing dog. Okay, from here, walk your feet and your hands together. Take your feet a bit wider than your hips and turn those toes out. Go ahead and drop your hips down into a malasana squat. And let's hold it right here and breathe. Okay, really getting into your hips now. Last thing before we settle down to rest. Think of pressing down gently into your feet and pressing those knees apart from each other. Think of making your longest spine here. And then if you want to walk your fingers out away from your hips, go ahead and do that. Really getting down into those hip creases and the low back. From here, friends, <laughs> let your hips come all the way to the floor. See if you can just sit down, shake your legs out. And then it's time to roll all the way down to the mat and rest. So extend your legs and your arms. Find some really big breath. Nice, soft, natural, just spacious breath. No longer controlling it. Enjoy softness and ease in your body. Each moment, a little bit more of the little shreds of remaining tension that could possibly remain are just diffusing away. Your face, your jaw, everything's soft. Take a little time just to be here, just enjoying the moment, noticing everything. Notice your thoughts, 
little sounds around you. Little sensations on your body. And details of your breath. Keep resting as long as you can. This is where I'll leave you for our practice today. Thanks so much for practicing with me.